Hey guys, Crusher045 here again. Basically, we're going to continue along the series, like I said last time. Um, but I want to show you really fast, we still have our job, which means we're still going to be raking in a salary to build up our savings. And so, because of that, I don't see a reason for us to take any new jobs or do anything this year, because our job has nothing to do this year. So, basically, while I'm talking here, I'm just going to fast forward through the year, see if anything interesting happens. We looked at the metrics last time. We're going to see how... The one metric I want us to keep an eye on is the national approval rating and the state approval rating as well as the city approval rating because the lower these are, the higher the chance our party will do well because Republicans control both the state and the nation, but the city is the one we want to be as high as possible so we have the best chance of winning in the city. Uh, I forgot to mention too, with our political points being as high as they are, we might have the ability to run for a higher office in the next election. and. By that I mean we might be able to help higher level candidates run, and if that's what we get, we're going to do that. Um, so yeah, let's just fast forward through. If anything interesting happens, I'll stop, we'll take a gander at it. But data doesn't update in this game until the start of the next year anyway, and we'll also get a rundown of all the bills passed to see if anything crazy happened with the Republican government. Uh, in the last episode, of course, we watched the presidential election results, and yeah, they were a little weird. Just, just a little bit. Um, <laughs> nothing too crazy there. Basically, the idea I have in mind for that is that I won't do anything with those results until I feel that there's a necessary reason to change the mechanics, because at the moment... I'm not sure if it was a fluke of the system, or if it was, um, you know, just a really good year for Republicans, because it's it has to be repeatable in that sense. So I'm not going to change anything yet, but if it happens again, like in this midterm election coming up in this episode, and we have, say, oh, I don't know, um, Democrats swing a whole bunch of things, or Republicans swing even more things... Then I'll know, okay, results are a little bit bizarre. I need to go in and edit select states. I'd probably go in and edit the states that are really Democratic strongholds in most elections that have gotten become very big swing states that shouldn't be swing states like, say, Washington State or Connecticut. Um, but for now, uh, let's go ahead and go to the next year. And just real quickly here, our Republican governor is not seeking re-election and a representative from our district is retiring. And our state representative is also stepping down, but that's, I guess that's not a good thing. I, let me see if I actually, is a decent thing or not. Oh, house, there we go. Um, I need to find our district. I forget what Kansas district we're from. Uh, I should look this up first. Nope, not what I wanted. Okay, there we go. This tells me. We're Congressional District 2, which is more Republican. It is probably a Republican. Okay. Okay, then. Let's take a look. 2018 has come. You know, there's a universal background check on weapons. That's what this refers to. So, you have a weapons background check in the city of Topeka. Taxes went down in the state. Abstinence only sex education. Wow, that's that's great. I'm, <laughs> I'm glad that's what we've passed. Uh, they got rid of Medicaid expansion, which is not a good thing. Uh, they've increased Social Security eligibility age and increased the minimum wage. See, how did Republicans do so well when they did all of this? And that's what we're going to check. The government approval rating, how did it still go up? I mean, it went down in debt because that's still rising. In infrastructure. And in health because obviously cutting Medicaid is not a good thing and Social Security is not a good thing. The military does make people happy because they did probably raise the budget. Yeah, Republican government does that. They've actually narrowed the gap a little bit. I'm kind of kind of proud to see that the gap's gotten a little bit narrowed. In the state, how are Republicans doing? Uh, they've stagnated. That's not good, but it's not bad either. And in the city, we're doing worse because of mainly the effectiveness, which means... The department effectiveness basically means that the people in charge of a particular department are inexperienced. And that goes up with time as they sit in office, especially with new mayors and new people coming in. So, it's 2018. We actually can only run for state representative, but we don't want to do that because we still have our job. And we want to run for city first. We're also not old enough. Um, 
keeping it within realism. So yeah, we basically can look at our campaign menu now because we actually have the option to do that. The ones that you need to keep an eye on, I think, are taxes because those policy positions, people will support different things based on where the taxes currently sit, obviously, because it's an increase, decrease, maintain sort of you know, metric. And um, so with that said, we basically want to make sure we check these again. They look like they're in good shape. It's still this minimum wage one. I was looking back at like the videos that I made to make sure that I was doing things right. Uh, I realize I repeated a lot of my actions, but I'm looking at it and I'm like, I don't understand why they just, they like minimum wage being raised, but then they don't like minimum wage being raised. That's really weird to me, and I'm not sure exactly why that's the case. With this being a midterm year, we can see how Democrats do. Uh, we need to wait one more turn. Now we can go in and add all empty positions with candidates for the state house. Um, I want to make sure we're doing everything we can to make voters happy because we have a good support base, but I think we'll be okay to just fill it all again like we did last time. I think that's probably the best we're going to get. So, yeah, let's just go through to the primary state because there's nothing going to happen between then and now. Okay, that's interesting. I'm wondering if we can have a Democratic governor. That'd be really, really, really fancy, but probably not. Okay, let's go, like I said before, 15 weeks. All right, so see, now they're 50-50, so it's because of economic growth and minimum wage policy. So I want to make sure, really fast, if I reverse policy and... What if I get rid of flat tax? Does that make... 46. I don't think that helped us at all, really. So, yeah, that's 49. So I think we'll be okay like this. It's just not ideal. We have a million dollars to spend, so we're going to see bigger turnout numbers this time because we've actually got a lot of money to spend. And so, yeah, hopefully we can do this. This will be a shorter episode compared to last time because it's basically the same process as last time. Just me breezing through, trying to get our people in office. 760000 will spend a good $600,000, or 575 is probably good. And uh, midterm, so turnout's going to be lower. So this 3% actually makes a huge difference in the sense that it's a mid -year, midterm year. I think that us Democrats have a good chance in these midterms. Uh, let's go ahead and see if that's the case, and we won't know until after the fact. Um, so Democrats did do well in our district, that's good to see, and in the state house. We gained four total seats, so that means that we did our job this time. We flipped four seats. Um, in fact, District 3, District 51, District 60, and District 67 were all flipped very narrowly in some of them, and more, by, and more so in others. And in the state senate, they gained one seat, but yeah, that's not good. Okay. But we weren't running for the state. We weren't helping the state senate, I should say. We were helping the state. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, you see, this is what I mean. Uh, it's a very swing swing situation. But I think it makes sense, and I just want to talk about this really fast, why this might have happened. So the way the game is set up at the moment is that essentially there's party fatigue as a factor. And so, because Republicans control both the president, all th all three, the presidency, the Senate, and the House, it means that people were more likely to vote for Democrats. And because um, us um, Democrats didn't have the advantage, it made it easier for us to actually try to flip. And so, you can see a lot of these elections did flip. Like I said, I want to see 2020 as well because if it's another huge swing in the other direction then I'm going to be very, very cautious about leaving it the way it is. Let's go all the way through the rest of the year. We'll attend the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Yada yada, 52. Um, our mayor's not running for re-election, and the school board member is not. And we're going to run for the school board next time because I think that's a good office for us to start with. And then, let's see. Okay, we have 12,000 political points. We've gone up another huge amount because we helped candidates win and we flipped districts. 
Minimum wage is now 816. Such a weird number for the national average. Uh, our state's 820 an hour, but they decreased it from 863. Okay, that's... Okay. Metrics-wise, city's not doing so well. State's doing the same as it did last year, and this national is actually doing good. That's not good. Okay, so now we can check the house to see that we've had a humongous swing in the other direction. Uh, so... Yeah, I'll keep an eye on this in 2020. If it swings another big massive like this in the house, then I'll know that some data needs to be adjusted, and I will adjust it, uh, probably in a video. This is our Senate. There's a lot of purple states. Um, a lot of purple states. But that'll probably be readjusted in the next election. And you can see that the Senate is not so bad. Um, yeah, so that's basically the end of this video. In the next one, we're going to be running for school board again. And, yeah, I think that'll be a good office for us to do, running for school board and seeing what we can do. All right, but without further ado, guys, uh, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode.